So I promised to do a live demo on how to make silver line dots and uh, <laughs> you know, just in case something goes wrong tomorrow because with live you never know um, I am just going to record the same thing more or less and then maybe I have something that I can post so what you have to prepare and I would like to have a, a bead with a silver line dot on it but I don't have any in my <laughs> collection I just made some there in the kiln behind me uh, so I'll show those later but uh, you've seen some pictures on Facebook so you get an idea what you need to prepare is a stringer this one here is um, my favorite it's it looks almost clear but it's dark lavender and um, so I pulled it with a regular clear stringer so it's a it's a tiny bit thicker than a commercial stringer or you know sometimes commercial stringers come in different thicknesses so a stringer and you want to have a, a light transparent color so I like this uh, dark transparent lavender but you can use light blue or but you have to stay away from colors like transparent red or orange they're just too they're so dense that they won't let the silver show through and the other thing I prepared is my favorite color for this this uh, looks like black but what it is it's a silver plum and when you make your silver line dot on top of this it almost looks like a silver bevel but you can use any color you want if you if you're more like uh, Susan Ottobin, she she would probably use reds and greens and yellows because she likes bright colors. Um, so that's up to you. You can use black. So just um, experiment a little bit with that. And then you need silver. Let's see here. So so I just um, that was the last uh, leaf that I had in my booklet. So I'm going to show you how to cut that. But the first thing, so I'm going to put my stringers somewhere down here. And um, so what's really, really important is like, you see the torch is here and the ground is down here. So that's about six inches away. And you'll see that you have very little time to make the stringer stick on the silver. So you need to make some contraption to get as close to the tip of the torch as possible. So I have a, <laughs> a container of CZs to put that down here. And then I have this um, block, it's a solid block of wood and it has a graphite plate on top and this is really perfect. It's just not tall enough so I put it on top of the, the, the little jar there. So now I'm about two inches away so it would be better if you could be like this or, or underneath the torch but so just uh, do the best you can to get as close to the tip of the torch as possible. So now we have to prepare some silver. And um, <laughs> I lost my uh, scissors. What? Oh, yeah. So I got these um, hair cutting scissors. And you can kind of see here that it's not rusty. I think these are like remnants of glue. And I got that gooby gone. You want to use kind of virgin scissors. They sh you know, when you feel it, there should be no resistance. There should be no uh, glue residue on the scissors. So I'm taking, and this is silver foil and not silver leaf. With silver leaf, you could not make this happen. Let's see, oh, <laughs> it's, you can see the, it's the oxygen coming out of my torch that it makes it flutter which is not a good idea. So go a little bit to the side. And so what I do, I cut, can you see it there? So I cut fringes and I cut my, the width of the silver a little bit wider than I think my dot will be. So let's say you cut three and then you go from this direction and cut squares so I have three squares and I'm putting them onto my um, my graphite plate here and always have more I, I'm just gonna make one of these dots so you always want to have more than one because they, <laughs> they tend to disappear in the in the universe so that's all um, 
that's all that we need. Oh, and the tools. Um, you just so you make a bead, and I always prefer a flattened bead. Um, so I use a magic wand to tap down the dot, and then you need a pair of nippers, and you need nippers that uh, these are the Japanese nippers. You need something that reacts very cl quickly. You know, when you have the ones with the discs, it's sometimes difficult to find the right spot to nip, and you want to do this quickly. So I prepared a bead in the kiln and I hope that when I introduce this into the flame that it's not going to shatter. Okay, so there. Let me adjust the flame a little bit. Well, actually, I kind of have the flame slightly to the left so that you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, I'm gonna get the bead. And whenever you take a bead out of the kiln and you want to reheat it, oops, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, kiln dust in there and something cracked. You know, typically in order to do this, you know, kind of garage, what they call garage a bead in the kiln, and then take it out and get it back in the flame, you want to have your temperature higher than the 950 or 960 that you kneel the beads at, but I have no clue how to <laughs> change the temperature in my kiln. <laughs> and I'm not gonna touch it. So uh, I think it's okay. So on this on this side here, you see this, I made like three simple string lines, just kind of to have something more interesting there. And they're made with, um, uh, with the silver plum. And I, so they're slightly raised, so here we go. So the first thing we need is make a dot on the bead, and I put so. And as far as you know, we can talk about design. Where would you put this dot? Would you put it? Oops, <laughs> put it in the center of the lines, on top of one of the sides. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to make a fairly large dot on my stringer. And I'm going to place it on that one line. So when you pull your, your, your string away, make sure that you actually leave quite a bit of glass behind because if you push down and pull back immediately, you take like half of the amount of glass that you have here back with you. So now I give it a little bit of heat and my goal here is to flatten it. And I don't wanna flatten it completely because I want this to be like a bezel setting. So about this much. See how it's still like, I don't know, less than a milli, maybe a milli, milli, millimeter. So that's it. Now keep this warm. Now, this is the tricky part. What you have to do, so first of all, make sure that your stringer is flat. So it has a nice flat bottom. So my goal is to heat the stringer and then tap it straight down onto a piece of silver. Now, the problem is that, you know, the, temp the, the, <laughs> the, the way that the stringer has to travel from here to there, it can cool off. So <laughs> I lost my demo because my phone rang. <laughs> I forgot to put it on, do not disturb. Um, so this is part two of the silver line dot. So keep all this warm. So you go, you have to heat your stringer and go downwards. And I literally, I don't know whether you can see, I'm going straight down, not in an angle, straight down. It looks a little bit as if I'm angled because of the perspective. So keep this warm. And so what you have to do is you have to, to you have to heat only the very tip of the stringer. You don't want it to ball up or anything. So. I'm going sideways in the flame. This would be going straight in the flame, straight down. This is sideways, so that you see the full length of the stringer. So I'm just very quickly, just quickly, quickly, heat that and then I'm going down. And what you just saw is perfect. It's not the way I want it. So when I push down on the silver, it didn't stick because this wasn't hot enough. But now you can see, I'm holding the silver, see how you have like a larger diameter on the bottom of the stringer. So you don't want to 
use that, you always want to start up with the straight bottom of the string. So I mean, oop, that was a little bit cracked down there. See, it actually balled up, so that wasn't good. So that's why I'm saying you want stringer that reacts very quickly. So I heat, 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 just the bottom. Don't let it ball up and go down and now it's sticking. So now the trick is to, to basically melt away the, 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 the silver that you don't need. And I'm going, now I'm holding the, the stringer straight at the flame, straight down, but only at the edge. So I'm not gonna go really in the flame. I'm watching the silver, literally, oops, my beads getting too hot. So I'm get, watching the silver like see how it's burning away but you never get close to the bottom of this stringer with the silver so it's mostly and then when you look at it you have a silver dot on the bottom so now you can't go oops you can't go back in the flame with the stringer so just hold it close and now you bring this dot to a nice glow and push into the center and the harder you push the more of a bevel look, you can't see. So now I'm cutting off, one second, I can't get in there. <laughs> I'm cutting off the stringer and when you hold it sideways, you see that the stringer is kind of, it's above the bevel, above the dot. So now in order to kind of flame polish that dot, you go sideways in the flame, just like that and you only hit the lavender stringer ever so slightly in the very edge of the flame. You don't want to get that, that um, silver, silver plum dot. And here it is. It's not, it's, it's almost too dark, but it's really cool in person. You get that lavender sparkly look. So that's it, and then it's up to you what kind of uh, bead you put this on. Let me put this in the kiln. Um, the way that I look at these um, at these silver line dots, they are kind of like a br a brooch, if that is a word, a brooch brooch for an outfit. You know, you can make any kind of design. It can be a graphic design. It can be pictorial. It can be. Uh, organic and then you put one of those there it's like you know making adding a little bit bling to your bead and um, that's really cool so thank you to Diana East for this wonderful technique and I hope that uh, you have time to practice the biggest mistake that I've seen um, students do is that they melt the, the lavender dot into the bevel and then you have only like one you know, kind of like one blob. So you want to make sure that the bevel stays uh, like round and with the indentation where the silver silver dot is. So you don't want to give it too much heat. All right, thank you very much.